This is video from the night of gunfire, arson, and looting that exploded on the streets of the St. Louis suburb. And appeals for calm from everyone from the teenager's parents to the president did nothing to stop that violence. Lindsay Duncombe begins our coverage live in Ferguson once again. Lindsay, what are you seeing and hearing there this hour? Well, uh, right now we appear to be moving away from that emergency phase to an investigation phase. A at the building behind me, which is just squashed after a fire, they've got the police tape up. There are investigators there keeping people from going close because, as you can see from the smoke, it is still smoldering. And it's not the only building around here that's still smoldering. I just look over there and I see plumes of now white smoke coming up. I believe that's from an auto parts store where we saw images last night of uh, cars actually on fire and we can expect that more people will take to the streets today uh, in downtown Clayton. There are uh, protests planned and the people we spoke to said that they want to continue to have their message out there. And when we were out there uh, in as the tear gas was fading, I got two sense of emotions from people. One was anger at this decision. Even though people expected it, uh, they were angry to hear that Darren Wilson would not face any charges. And the other was sad sadness that after all of this, after all of the work that had been done leading up to this to try to, to prevent violence, we're here right now. And you can hear that in both of these two clips that we taught last night. The man Where's shot seven times in his hand, in his eye. You can't justify that. Never in my time would I think that the same things that my grandmother talked about in their days of injustice and all that, I would have to experience it at 30 years old and possibly be telling my grandchildren the same stories that my grandparents told me. Comment there, such a pithy comment there, Lindsay, the whole dream of post-racial America clearly not existing to that young man to whom you spoke last night. Today, what should we be watching for? Well, watch for people to go back to the streets to continue to spread their anger. But the question is, will it become violent again? And police are taking uh, precautions to prevent that from happening. Already, we know that the governor has called in more National Guard. And in St. Louis, they, they have a plan. They say they're not going to wait as long as they did last night before they go in to disperse crowds. Uh, one of the problems was is that the crowd would, would be problematic, then they would be dispersed, uh, and then they would keep coming back again. So we can expect to see more of that should it go in that direction. As for whether or not anything could have been done to prevent us from getting to this point, when you consider all of the work was done to try to prevent violence, the police say that no, the way it was last night, uh, they did the best they could. Here's one of the police speaking earlier. I don't think we were underprepared, but I'll be honest with you, unless we bring 10,000 policemen in here, I don't think we can prevent folks that really are intent on, on just destroying a community. Now, if you look at the destruction by the numbers, it is really incredibly sad. We're talking about dozens of businesses destroyed or looted. There are more than 80 arrests, more than 60 of them here in Ferguson. But in all of that, officials were quick to point out that no one died last night, which when you consider the destruction around here, uh, that is an incredibly fortunate thing. Lindsay, thank you very much. Lindsay Duncombe there in Ferguson.